fifth day until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Praise the Lord. What was Jacob's response? Verse 16 says, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is one, this is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillow and poured oil upon the top of it. Praise the Lord. So he built an altar. He built an altar. God, of course, he must have been tired having, you know, taken that long journey, long, lonely journey. But along the line, somehow he slept. And while he slept, God spoke to him in a dream and that dream was to reassure him that dream was god speaking to him to guide him to direct him to reassure him to you know remind him of the promises that he had given to his fathers that was still his own portion as long as he walked perfect before god praise the lord so god reveals to us his mind he guides us even in our dreams praise the lord now, in Genesis chapter 31, we also see there God gave a dream to this same Jacob. And that dream was to help Jacob to be able to excel in business. To excel in business. Laban, the one he was working for, was a very crafty man. But somehow, God had to help Jacob. And how did he help him? In a dream... He ministered to him as to how he needed to keep the flock to be able to benefit from the proceeds of that business. Praise the Lord. God will speak to us concerning our businesses in Jesus' name. God still speaks in dreams. He will speak to us concerning our businesses in our dreams in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall get words of assurance, reassurance from him. We shall get also words of warning. Peradventure, we're on the wrong track. That we may be able to change our tracks to the right one. Praise the Lord. Now, in Judges chapter 7, we are looking at dreams. Judges, Judges chapter 7, reading from verse 12 to 14, we find another person that was given a dream. Now, the army of Israel, and um, headed by Gideon, they had these enemies round about them. Some nations gathered and came against them, the host of Midian. They gathered and came against them. And from this story, you'll find out that verse 12 of Judges chapter 7, it says, And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camel were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. You can imagine they came against Israel. Uh, the, the army of, of Israel was headed by Gideon and they came against them. We're not talking about the, 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 the footmen that came or those who were riding on those uh, camels and the horses. But the, the, the account here is that their camels were without number like the sand of the earth to tell you how mighty that multitude was that came against them but god through a dream was able to encourage the army of gideon in actual fact gideon's army was about thirty-two thousand, but god said no you have to you have to reduce this number and that's because god does not work by numbers praise the lord they reduced their number to just 300 against a great multitude. But through a dream, God gave the camp of the Midianites a dream. And the Israelites were able to eavesdrop to hear them sharing the dream that God
gave to them. And what was that dream? The dream was that, you know, a hand, a sword came into the camp of their enemies, the, the, the Midianites, and then destroyed all that came for that battle. And so that put fear in their hearts. They said, ah, this must be the God of Israel. And now, the following day, what happened? They turned their backs on Israel. 300 Israelis were able to put to flight thousands of them and they killed themselves. That was because God, through a dream, instilled fear in their hearts and they had to run. Praise the Lord. God will put fear in the hearts of your enemies and your enemies will turn their back on you. I say your enemies will turn their backs on you in the name of Jesus. And that's because God has not changed. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We see someone again who received a dream from God. First Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3 from verse 5 to 15. We see the story of Solomon. Solomon had a dialogue. God appeared to him in a dream and they had a dialogue. And even today, God can appear to you in a dream and have a dialogue with you. Praise the Lord. Now, Solomon offered to God an offering nobody else had done in the past. He offered so much to God. And God decided to visit him. And how did God visit him? In the dream. God will visit you in your dream. I say, God will visit you in your dream. And as God visited him, he gave him a promise right in the dream. He asked him what he wanted. And it will interest you to note that Solomon did not go to ask, as the Bible says, for the life of his enemies. He did not go to ask for riches. But he asked for something that touched the heart of God. And for him to have asked that, that means that must have been his preoccupation. That must have been his preoccupation all through. For him to be able to ask that same thing in his dream, praise the Lord. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, what is your preoccupation? Is it how you're going to make it in life or how you're going to, what you're going to do to bring glory to the, the name of the Lord? Praise the Lord. I want us to read that story from the book of 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. It says, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in the uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness. And thou hast given him a son, to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Verse 9. It says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech did what? Pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Praise the Lord. If God appeared to you in your dream today, are you sure you'll ask the way Solomon asked? Many of us would have been asking, there is this terrible man that has been harassing me in my office. This is the one you should deal with first. <laughs> but that was not what he was asking for. Praise the Lord. He was asking for something that would please the heart of God. And God went beyond that to do things he never asked for that were needful in his life. Praise the Lord. Thank God because he will speak to us in our dreams. God will ask us, what is it that you want me to do for you? But my prayer is that our heart will be after him. If you have a heart after God and he appears to you in your dream, 
the thing you'll begin to ask is things that will glorify him. And then you'll see him going ahead to do even greater things for you. That shall be our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon has asked this thing. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there is none like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Verse 13. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both what? Riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will also do what? Lengthen thy days. Praise the Lord. He did not go asking for long life. He did not go asking for there is this contract I have been tendering for. You know, if you could just do that for me, that would just be fine. He never did that. He asked for something to glorify God. And God went ahead to do all that was needful in his life. Praise the Lord. Now we see one other person in the New Testament this time that God spoke to. Pilate's wife. How many of us remember the story? When Jesus was being um, cross-examined to be crucified, when they, he came to Pilate's court, Pilate's court, as they were harassing him and doing all kinds of things, the wife came to Pilate, to his court, and then sought audience with him and told him that, ah, last night, I was troubled by reason of this man that is in your court today. He's an innocent man. Make sure you don't have anything to do with him in other words make sure you do not hand him over to be crucified wash your hands off this matter praise the lord but pilate wanted to please the jews and he exchanged a criminal for jesus praise the lord he was warned in a dream through his wife but he refused to heed to that warning and of course the consequence of that disobedience certainly will come upon him praise the lord now, the other, um, the other source of a dream, we have already talked about that, that's from the heart of man. When a man has eaten so much, or sometimes a man is hungry, or a man is thinking about something, it is possible that that man can have a dream as regards what he has been thinking about. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3, we saw that last time. It says, for a dream cometh through the multitude of businesses, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 7 also. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 7. It says, and the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her mountain, and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision it shall even be as when an hungry man dreameth and behold he eateth but he awaketh and his soul is what empty and as when a testy man dreameth and behold he drinketh but he awaketh and behold he is faint and his soul hath appetite so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against mount zion praise the lord so from the heart of a man dreams can also emanate from the heart of a man dreams can you know can, can be generated depending on what you have been thinking all day long praise the lord hallelujah now we now said we could also uh, devil the devil could also give dreams to people the devil could also give dreams to people. And we said the dreams that the devil normally will give to people are nightmares. Because nothing good comes from the devil. Nightmares. Second Chronicles chapter 18 verse 22. Second Chronicles chapter 18 verse 22. It 
It says, Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. A lying spirit can generate a dream in the life of a man. As First Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, we saw how an evil spirit troubled Saul. And that was because the Spirit of God had departed from him. So when the Spirit of God departs from the life of a man, an evil spirit can trouble that man. And evil spirits can give that man all kinds of dreams. Praise the Lord. And we see in the book of 1 Samuel again, chapter 28, 1 Samuel 28, verses 6 and 7, Saul was backsliding and God refused to guide him any longer because he had backsliding. He was living in disobedience to God. And so he was cut off from receiving divine guidance. And so he wanted guidance by all means. So he had to consult familiar spirits from the devil to be able to receive dreams and visions. Praise the Lord. And we said nightmares are usually from the devil. And that's because God does not give us fear. Praise the Lord. He has not given us the spirit of fear. That's what the Bible says. So when a man wakes up and is sweating and is agitated and troubled by reason of some dreams he had in the night, it is not likely that God can give you that kind of dream. Because even if there's a, a trouble that is, there's an impending trouble that is coming your way, God wants to reveal to you. He will always show you a way out. God will always show you a way what? Out. It does not matter how terrible your sins may have been. He will always show you a way out. A way of escape. If only you hold on to that way and repent. And so he will always give you some encouragement. Yes, there is an impending danger that is coming. But this is the way out. If only you will go this way. Praise the Lord. We saw that in the life of um, the king. The king that took the wife of Abraham, Sarah. He was warned in a dream. And he immediately, you know, did what God expected him to do. He restituted. He gave back the, the wife of Abraham's wife back to him. And he also gave him gifts to restitute. And immediately, the problem they were going through came to an end. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. What does he say? It says, for God had not done what? Given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and what? Of a sound mind. He has not given you the spirit of fear. He has given you the spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible, all through, you see where God is saying, you know, fear not. Bible scholars will tell us, you have fear not in more than 365 places in the Bible. In other words, for every day of the year, God is giving you, you know, a word of encouragement. Fear not. Fear not. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, now when people have these dreams that are like nightmares, many people, especially the unbelievers, where will they run to? They will run to the agents of the devil to look for help, to look for interpretations. And then they will, you know, they will roll in themselves the more into greater problem. Praise the Lord. If per adventure you, won't have, you have a dream like that, what do you need to do? You need to go back to God. You need to examine your life. Are there openings you have made for the enemy to come in? You just repent of them and then cry out to God. And of course, the almighty God certainly will deliver you in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 1 to 13. You can just take that down when we get to work and read. Also Jeremiah chapter 23. I'll read Jeremiah chapter 23. Verses 27 and 32. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 27. It says, Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for 
Baal. When they have dreams, where do they go to? They go to the native doctors, to Baal, agents of Baal, agents of darkness. Verse 28 says, the prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that had my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, purposes, why does God give us dreams? We have looked at, we have seen some of them in the course of some of the scriptures we read. But God often uses dreams to further his purpose and his plans and his goals in our lives. He uses dreams to further his purpose, achieve his planned goals in our lives. God speaks to us through dreams for various reasons. And we've seen some of them. It would be for instruction. It would be for instruction. Remember the, 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 the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus. They were engaged to be married. They had not yet married. And suddenly he found that Mary was pregnant. Of course, he was worried. But he was a gentleman and he never wanted to put her away and make her a public shame. And so he was just pondering what to do. So in the midst of that, he had a dream and God gave him an instruction. God gave him a revelation to be able to know exactly what was going on. Praise the Lord. And so when we have challenges, we don't know which way to go. We can always look up to him. He can give you a dream to give you revelations and divine insight as to what you ought to do. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20. The Bible says, But while he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in what? In what? In a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So God through dreams can give us revelations. He can give us insight into challenges that we're not we don't know the answers to it can give us divine directions praise the lord he can also warn us as we have seen already abimelech was warned in the dream he took somebody else's wife but he did not he did it according to him in the innocency of his heart because uh, abraham introduced sarah as his sister and it was based on that according to him he took her as wife unknown to him unknown to him she was actually his wife also. She was his half-sister, but she was his wife. Praise the Lord. And he had to be warned in a dream. He had to be warned in a dream. And he heeded to the warning of God. And that brought an end to the danger that he was going through with the rest of his, uh, of his, um, of his nation. Praise the Lord. Now, in Matthew chapter 2 again, Matthew chapter 2 from verse 11, verses 11 and 12, we see how the wise men were also warned in a dream not to return to Herod. They were warned in a dream. Herod had a terrible plan for baby Jesus and he had asked them nicely, I want to go worship this king. When you go, you see him, please you know, come back and let me know exactly where he is. Of course, they certainly may, may not have known the evil and wicked intentions of Herod. Ordinarily, they would have gone back to tell Herod about where Jesus was found. And of course, he would have gone there to do what he purposed to do in his heart. But in a dream, God revealed to them. Praise the Lord. God will reveal things to us to make sure that Dangers that are ahead never come to pass in the name of Jesus. Now, also in Matthew chapter 2, 19 to 23, we also have another dream there. Uh, Joseph was instructed to return baby Jesus when the danger in the land was over. He was now instructed in a dream to go back because the king that was looking for uh, the head of of, of the baby was no more. Praise the Lord. Now, through dreams, God also gives us revelations of future events 
revelations of future events. He gives us revelations of future events. In Genesis chapter 37 from verse 5 to 10, we see the dream of Joseph. He had a dream. God gave him a dream as to how his tomorrow was to be. And he was to be a ruler. All his brothers were to bow down to him. Not just that, he had a second dream. Even his parents were to bow down to him. And of course, that dream was also fulfilled because it was God that gave the dream. Praise the Lord. We see that in the book of Genesis chapter 37, from verse 5 to 10. And then the fulfillment we see in Genesis chapter 42, verses 5 to 9. Genesis chapter 42, from verse 5 to 9. The dream was fulfilled exactly as it was prophesied. And of course, from the time he had a dream to the time the fulfillment came, there were all kinds of obstacles. And it was like, can this come to pass? But because the dream was from God, and Joseph also remained faithful, he remained faithful, that dream came to pass. So, yes, God can give us dreams, but the promises of God are usually, are always conditional. His promises are always conditional. They come with conditions. As long as we keep our own little part of the condition, God certainly will fulfill his own part at the appointed time. And that's because our God is a covenant-keeping God. Praise the Lord. That, that dream was fulfilled. We could, let's just read Genesis chapter 42 from verse 5. It says, And the sons of Israel came to by con among those that came for the famine was in the land of canaan and joseph was the governor over the land and he it was that sold to all the people of the land and joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth these were the same people that sold him to slavery when they heard that god had given him a dream and that he was the one I was going to rule over them, they said, over our dead bodies. In fact, as far as they were concerned, they wanted to kill him. But somehow, because God's hand was upon his life, what happened? They sold him into slavery. And they thought by selling him into slavery, it was as good as him having been dead. But at the appointed time, God brought to pass that dream that he gave to him. Praise the Lord. And brethren, in the word of God, we have a lot of promises God has given to us. You don't need to go to bed to sleep for you to be able to receive the dream. Even as you look into his word. And that's the next thing we're going to be looking at. As you look into his word, the Bible is a surer word of prophecy. It does not matter whether it's dreams, whether it's prophecy, or whether it's vision. The word of God is a surer word of dreams, a surer word of prophecy. It's a surer word of visions. And so as we receive from God's word what he has said concerning us, and we hold on to them and refuse to compromise our faith, brethren, God is a covenant keeper. Whatever he has promised you certainly must come to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, in Genesis chapter 40, we also find another dream there. Joseph, while he was in prison, he had to interpret a dream. You know, a dream that revealed the future. We talked about dreams giving us a revelation of the, of the future. He interpreted a dream to the butler and to the baker of Pharaoh. I'm sure we remember the story. Huh? We remember the story. Yeah. So, for one of them, it was a positive one. The other one, it was, a, it was a negative one. And all of it came to pass. Praise the Lord. He revealed to them what was going to befall them. What was going to, be, what was going to befall them. One was going to be restored back to the palace. And the other one, his head was to be taken off him. And exactly as he interpreted those dreams for them, it also came to pass. So through dreams, God can reveal to us 
things that are yet to come to pass. He can reveal our future to us. Praise the Lord. And I pray that our future will be a bright one in the name of Jesus. And of course, as a child of God, your future is bound to be bright. The Bible says, say ye to the righteous, it shall be well. It shall be well with you. Your tomorrow shall be all right. Hallelujah. Your tomorrow shall be all right in Jesus' name. Now, dreams could also be a source of comfort and encouragement. God could use dreams to comfort us, to encourage us. Especially for those that truly love God. We see Gideon and his army, they were encouraged when they heard the dream that their enemies dreamt. They eavesdropped by the camp of their enemies and they had the dream that the enemies dreamt. And that dream frightened their enemies and it gave them courage and comfort to be able to go against that multitude with just 300 soldiers. Praise the Lord. And God gave them victory in that battle. Praise the Lord. Jacob was encouraged. We have seen that already. Jacob was encouraged in the book of Genesis chapter 28. He was encouraged as he was running away from his brother. Now, dreams can warn against impending danger or the judgment of God. We have seen all of that. Dreams can also foretell apparently impossible things. Things that are apparently impossible. Dreams can actually foretell them. We've seen that. I will still see a little bit more of that. Now, when a dream is repeated, it means that the fulfillment is very near in other words you have a dream you go to bed and that same dream you had it exactly the way you had it it means that that dream will soon be what fulfilled will soon be fulfilled genesis chapter 41 verse 32 genesis chapter 41 verse 32 it says and for that and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by God and God will do what? Shortly bring it to pass. So when a dream is repeated, repeatedly, you have a dream, the following day you have the same dream or even that same day you have the same dream repeatedly, it means that the manifestation of that dream is very near. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the question is, are all dreams reliable? I'm sure by now we already know the answer. Are all dreams reliable? Are all dreams reliable? No, they are not all reliable. Because if you have, you're hungry and you go and dream and you're eating in the dream, or you have set your eye on one particular sister, and you think that this must be your wife, and then you go to dream and you see yourself, uh, wearing a half, see how wearing a wedding gown by your side is not a reliable dream. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, they are not all reliable. And that's why we must not put our trust absolutely on dreams and visions or even prophecies, as we have said earlier. What you think may be reflected in your dreams. We have seen that already what you think may be reflected in your dreams. That's the reason why not all dreams can be um, seen as being reliable. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 7, we have seen verse 3 already, but verse 7 says, For in the multitude of dreams, and in many words, there are also diverse what? Vanities, but fear thou God. There are many dreams that are just vain and all realities. Praise the Lord. Now, there are also false dreams that come through the influence of Satan. Nothing good comes from Satan. Satan is a deceiver. So, he can give false dreams to people. We've seen that in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 25. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 25. It says, I have heard what the prophet said, that the prophecy lies in 
my what? Name. Saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. You see? Dreams could be false. Haven't been influenced by Satan. So there are false dreams. They're not of God. Jeremiah chapter 29. We can also take down 8 to 9. Talking about false dreams. I'll read from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 and 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 and 14. It says, For such are also, for such are false apostles, deceitful what? workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed what? Into an angel of light. He can give false dreams. Verse yeah, okay, 13 and 14. Now, dreams need to be interpreted. Dreams need to be what? Interpreted. Because most, some, a number of times, you could just figuratively you see things in the dream, but you, they may need to be interpreted. Just like the dream God gave to Pharaoh. It was Joseph that interpreted it for him. And that interpretation was that for seven years, there's going to be bountiful harvest in the land. They'll have so much food. But after the seven years, they are going to have famine for another seven years. But God gave uh, Pharaoh a dream in a figurative manner. It was Joseph that now interpreted the dream. And he said something before he interpreted that dream in the book of Genesis chapter 40 verse 8. Genesis chapter 40 verse 8 says, And they said unto him, not to Pharaoh, We have dreamed a dream. So to Joseph, we have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of, for it. And Joseph said unto them, do not, do not interpretations belong to who? Tell me then, I pray you. Today, people run from pillar to post. They're asking for people to interpret dreams from them, for them. It is God that interprets dreams. As a child of God, you don't need anybody to interpret your dreams for you. As you go to God, God will give you an interpretation of that dream. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, again in the book of Daniel, we see Daniel was also somebody that God gave a lot of wisdom in the place of interpreting dreams. He interpreted dreams for the kings that he worked with in Babylon. He interpreted dreams for them. King Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2, in actual fact, the king dreamt a dream. And he now gathered, it was a, it was, it was a, a dream that he could not remember. But he knew it was a very serious dream. But somehow he forgot the dream. And he needed somebody to tell him the dream. Not the interpretation, but first tell him what? The dream. And then after telling me the dream, now tell me the interpretation. And he said he did that for a purpose. Because if he told the people, the magicians and the sorcerers, and you know, they, will, they, will, they are 419 they must have an interpretation for a dream. Praise the Lord. So he said, you tell me the dream. I can't remember the dream myself. You tell me. And of course, if you're able to tell me and remind me that dream, that means, of course, whatever interpretation you give must be right. Praise the Lord. That was wisdom. And of course, none of them was. They said, ah, it is not possible. No human being can do that. But thank God, Daniel stepped in because the Spirit of God was upon his life. He was able to, you know, he was able to accurately tell the king the dream that the king dreamt that he had forgotten. He was never there. Even if he was there, when the king was sleeping and dreaming, there was no way he would have known. But God reveals to him. Praise the Lord. God will reveal things to us. As his children in the name of Jesus. That is, that is one advantage we have as sons and daughters of God. Because we have the spirit of God inside of us. And the spirit of God himself is the one that will reveal things to us through our spirit man. Praise the Lord. As long as we tune ourselves to him. He will reveal things to us in the name of Jesus. And so he did that. And of course he had a testimony that it is God himself that reveals 
dreams. Praise the Lord. And so when next another king, King Nebuchadnezzar, had a dream, he remembered the dream this time. Of course, those magicians, they knew that if they had given any interpretation, it would be said to be wrong. So they just called for Daniel to please come and do the interpretation. And of course, he did it right. And of course, that which he interpreted, all that he said concerning that dream also came to pass. Praise the Lord. The word of God is superior to any vision. The word of God is superior to any dream. The word of God is superior to any prophecy. And that's why even if you, it's like God has given you a dream, you must cross-check it with the word of God. If it goes contrary to the word, just abandon it. It can never be from God because God can never contradict himself. Praise the Lord. It does not matter how good, how nice that dream may look. As long as it does not tally with what God has said in his word, all you need to do is just throw it into the, into the uh, garbage uh, bin. Praise the Lord. Because it can never be from God. Look at Second Peter chapter 2. We're going to round up there. Second Peter chapter 2. It says, verse 19. Verse 19. Sorry, I think. Second Peter chapter, sorry, chapter one. Nineteen, are we there? He says we have also a more sure word of what prophecy. That's the word of God. So whatever it is any man tells you, go to God's word and compare it. He says we have a we also we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Thank God for dreams. Thank God for visions. Thank God for prophecies. May we just tell you, oh, this is what God is saying concerning us. Somehow you have an impression in your heart that this is what God has said. But we have a sure, a more sure word of prophecy. It says, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. That sure word of prophecy is the light. That must shine forth. Praise the Lord. It says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of men, but holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. So the word of God is the final. Thank God for visions. Thank God for dreams. Thank God for prophecies. But the word of God is our main source of guidance. 
And the word of God is open to every one of us as God's children. Not for the things he has reminded us, things he has taught us, guidance through dreams. Let's ask that the blood of Jesus will be a covering over us, over our hearts. Let's reject every dream that the enemy may want to bring our way. Every evil dream we may have dreamt in the past, let's cancel them. Because God has given us power over every power of the enemy. You have the power. You have the power to cancel. And it remains cancelled. It does not matter whether that dream has been repeated several times. God has given you power. It says what you disallow gets disallowed. What you disallow gets disallowed. As the Lord, the blood he shed for us will be a covering over our hearts. Let's reject every dream from the camp of the enemy. As after the house will be opened up unto the Almighty God to receive dreams from him. And even as he gives us dreams, that the Lord will give us divine interpretations of those dreams. The Lord will direct us in our sleep through dreams give us revelations give us an insight as to our tomorrow just like it did for joseph because that will encourage a man to remain standing to the end the lord will help us all that we need to do even as he's revealing things to us all that we need to do the lord will help us to be able to do them that his plans and his purposes for our lives will be established just like he did it in the life of Joseph. If there's a need for us to be warned, let's answer the Lord, oh, please do it. Every impending danger in our lives will be taken out of the way. And the grace to restitute, even as God reveals to us, let him please make available to us. The Lord will help us not to harden our hearts when he reveals things to us. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your.
holy name for that which you have taught us today. We hand over our spirit, souls, and our bodies unto you. Jesus, of my heart, I want to see, I want to see you, Lord. Yes, I want to see you. continually see you father let nothing come between us and you any longer in the mighty name of jesus as we go we ask your presence will go with us we shall dream dreams of heaven we shall receive messages from on high messages that will bring glory to your holy name messages that will keep us on the path of righteousness to the end thank you our father blessed be your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray Shall the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ.